Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This is being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Passage, as well as the season finale of Manifest. Like always, if I'm talking about something that you want to listen to, you can always look in the description down below. I code a time to start talking about each of the respective shows. So, for example, if you want to hear what I say about this week's episode of The Passage, you can skip to what I say about the season finale of Manifest. But the first thing I want to talk about is this week's episode of the passage a lot of interesting things went down in this episode um it's kind of interesting like the parallels where it's kind of like oh yeah amy's being super stubborn to brad because at first i was like oh is this her like like the vampirism kicking in kind of making her get like full of herself because you have like you know um gilder kind of like giving her all these compliments oh man good on you like oh man we're so proud of you amy kind of like kind of giving her like accolades and stuff like that kind of uh, positive reinforcement because i think for him it's like she's a kid and if she kind of gets swept up in like him congratulating her stuff like that she'll let her guard down and then it'll be kind of easier for him to kind of swoop in and kind of lead her down the road he needs her to essentially to kind of be what he needs to be like the starting point for all the weapons that they plan on creating for the military and stuff like that from this whole viral situation and so it is kind of interesting because she was getting pissed at brad because it's like obviously she misses her mom's book because for her it's like her mom's book is the only thing she has left of her mom and so not having it it's just kind of like she lost her mom all over again like the little piece that she could hold on to her and obviously brad didn't really realize that at the time um he's dealing with his own thing too just like this crazy situation he's trying to protect amy because it comes down to like you know he looks at her he looks at his daughter that he lost and he's not about to lose another kid that he cares about and then you know also like the whole lila situation because I, I was like how does this whole thing happen i was like what's going on i said like, all right she got taken last time we saw her i was like right i'd completely forgotten about that because it's interesting because we hard cut from her being taken to being here. Now, unless there was something I missed, I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention when the show was on or something that I missed. But nevertheless, um, it turns out in particular, it ended up being Clark's orders to do that. Because it's like, Lila is, you know, causing too much of a hubbub. Because, like, he probably knows that she, like I said, probably looking through uh, Sierra's, like, records and stuff like that. Because, you know, I'm sure reporters and stuff like that keep notes of who their um sources are so lila's name is probably there i got report back it's like all right we got to bring her in you know she's mixed up in all this because clark didn't know that at first because he never went inside of lacy's house to see lacy and her just because it's like well what went down went down and it's like well we got what we need to so he probably knew there might be other people in there potentially or at the very least maybe he was just kind of thinking okay maybe it is just brad i, I don't know I, i'm assuming it's just that because he probably had no idea that uh lila was involved in all of this but um yeah, it's kind of interesting because this episode brings up the fact is like obviously the viral can spread from bite and I was like, oh, that's so interesting. I was curious, you know, it depends on the continuity and stuff like that. But in retrospect, I was like, they kind of bring it up because it's like, well, yeah, it happened with Tim and I'm like, right, I forgot. That's how it all started. Like subsequent virals have been, let's just call them vampires. Once again, Brad literally brings it up all the time. Let's just call them what it is, you know, you know, if it quacks like a duck and it looks like a duck, it's most likely a duck. So it's like, yeah, it drinks blood, it burns in the sunlight screaming vampire you know so but it uh it was like of course yeah they've already introduced that fact but it's just we haven't seen it enough it's been that one time with uh tim getting infected so of course it's going to be the typical vampire role if you get bitten but like i said that's also depending on the continuity because certain things will make it so that the only way you can become a vampire even using like a vampire diaries for example like that's you know it's like you have to give someone their your blood and then like they have to die with your blood in it, like vampire blood in your system before they come back as a vampire. That's how it works. And that, um, kind of a similar thing in like Rosario plus vampire where it's like, even getting bit by a vampire isn't enough. Cause in that case to kind of, you can't really become a vampire. You can gain v vampiric abilities for a period of time. It's a whole thing. Sukune's character goes to a whole thing throughout it but at first it's just when a vampire injects their blood into you rather than just like sucking you like so it is kind of like a virus in this regard too of like you know i don't know it's just interesting because i i feel like until like i started getting older i never thought of like the virality of like vampirism of treating it like a virus or like it's like yeah, if someone sneezes on you you're most likely going to get sick from whatever infection that they have just because it passes like that it's the same thing i'm going off on a huge tangent so uh, i do apologize but we did learn a very, very interesting thing in this episode, and that is that um, it works kind of similar to the Vampire Diaries slash the originals with the whole uh, sire bloodline. That if you kill like the vampire who started it all, where like they the other like vampires in that bloodline that you know in this case Tim, you kill Tim, 
every vampire that was created based on his bloodline will die too. It's interesting, maybe because at the time that Tim had... Because that thing was killed, or is that supposed to imply that that thing's still alive? Or maybe it's supposed to be because he wasn't fully infected at the time. He got bitten, sure, but it's not probably not until you fully become a vampire does that become an issue of like, oh, the moment the um, bloodline is taken care of, you're not in, in a need, need to worry because he hadn't, you know, fully become infected at that point in time. So it's like, oh, that's. I think that in itself is kind of very interesting information, too. But that was kind of like, oh, I was curious to see how uh, they were having it. I don't know if that really, that happens, because most, you know, vampire stuff has it so that, like, basically, it's like, you kill Dracula, and basically, not necessarily that people would die, they'd probably get unvampired. essentially, that's kind of the whole uh, deal. That's kind of something you see most times, too, and that's kind of how most... I mean, that kind of applies to werewolves, too. It's like you find the person who turns you, you kill them, and then you go back to being a human. So, But it seems like in this case, you can't do that, in, you know, in their case, killing Tim, because killing Tim will, in fact, just kill yourself, you know? So that's the hard part, especially in Jonas's case and Sykes' case, because it's like, I mean, even, at, you know, Clark, too, because it's like, hey, you know, they all want to protect Amy, and in Jonas's case, he also wants to protect um, Elizabeth, so, which is interesting, because I like that they have, like, bring, brought Clark around, like, even though he's in a complicated situation, he, even he's like, okay, we go back, and then we regroup, kind of think of a new plan, and then we, you know, because he, even he's like, yeah, this whole thing is, like, falling apart, it's going to hell, so even he recognizes, like, yeah, like, I think that part of him was just kind of like, this is my mission and stuff like that, can't give it up, but now it's like, seeing just how terrible things can be, like, Winston got away, kind of caused a little havoc, but things could have been even worse than they were, and that was kind of something Amy and her, like, rage was kind of talking about, but I love Lila being like, you know, oh, that's not the viral Amy acting like that, it's like, no, nah, that's that's most likely her going through puberty, and then uh, Brad being like, yeah, I know, and that's even, that's, that's chaotic all on its own, you know, so... Because even he, him and, you know, Lila had that conversation of, like, you know, kind of wonder if it would have been like that with us, you know, with our daughter. So it's just kind of interesting. Even Brad being like, the fact of the matter is, I'm sorry I didn't listen to you before. But it's like, he even opens up, it's like, I lost someone, too. I know what it's like. And to lose someone you love and think about them every second, you know, every day. And the fact is, like, you know, we can talk about your mom anytime you want to. I wish I could have met her. She uh, was a great, had to be a great woman to raise such a great kid like you, you know, so, because it is a lot for her to shoulder, because, you, you know, you, like, you know, Brad, I think, did kind of get caught up in the moments of kind of forgetting, like, no, because, like, I felt like, it, like, she's been a little stubborn so far, but this was the first episode where she was really that stubborn, but it's like, so many decisions were made for her, like, she was not informed about a lot of stuff, so for, for her, I think it's just kind of like, hey, I get to make my own choices, I get to, you know, be in command for once. Like, but then things kind of got scary and dangerous with, you know, Winston after, and I think that kind of shifted her mind. What's also interesting about that, like, obviously, Tim, once again, not all that happy about Winston doing what he's doing because it kind of screws up his plan. But him being like, oh, I need you to kill Amy, and Winston's like, whoa, what are you talking about? I thought she was kind of one of us, and it's like, uh, no, that girl is able to track you. She is no longer Tim um, Tim, I meant to say team. She's no longer team us. I don't know what she is because the fact of the matter is, I don't, I'm, I'm curious to see, can she even be swayed? Because it's also interesting, because it turns out, like, the moment she used her powers last episode against um, Winston, it had an effect on Tim, too. Because it turns out, it seems like Amy is stronger than Tim. Because even a plan that um, Jonas and Sykes were coming up with is like, hey, we can use Amy's blood, because, like, her situation is a little bit different. It's kind of like, she's got, like, a new mutation of it. Whatever it is, I'm, something about Amy, maybe something in her bloodline, when mixed with vampiric blood, like, she still has more control over it than everyone else. Maybe it has something to do with the fact is that she is so young, like, the whole thing of, like, keeping her symptom free and stuff like that. Maybe it manifests itself in a different manner of her being able to maintain a lot more of her humanity, you know, kind of not being swept away by the vampirism. Because a lot of them keep a lot of their humanity, but they, they shift personality-wise to a certain degree. They become a little more devilish and evil to a certain degree, you know. But it also, like I said, it, it's it's always a thing of, like, vampirism always amplifies who you already were to a certain degree. So maybe that's kind of what they're kind of going for in this series as well, so. But it turns out the whole Amy situation, using her blood won't work. At the end of the day, Tim still ends up winning. I guess it's just because he's in a position where it's like he's gathered other people. Now, if Amy, for whatever reason, had an army of her own, like, more people, 
her blood could probably win out potentially, but I think it's just because Tim is connected to so many people. But in that moment, Amy has shown the potential that she is stronger than Tim, and that's why he wants her taken care of, because she's not on our side, she's the enemy, because she's too powerful to just be left unchecked. She's a variable I don't like, you know, so... We do see Brad kind of get knocked out towards the end of the episode. So I'm assuming that's, you know, Gilder being like, oh, no, 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 I'm going to keep Amy closed. This way it's like, oh, without Brad being around to kind of get in the way and kind of be, you know, playing, you know, protector in regards. So it's probably going to be a situation of like, oh, yeah, I got you alone. You know, because, you know, like I said, Brad was like, she's smart. She's not going to fall for your tricks. And he's like, oh, we're hitting it off kind of like we're. She, you know, it seems like we're kind of becoming friends and stuff like that. So it seems like it's going to be a situation of if he can get her alone, like I said, he's going to try and tilt her towards like, hey, come, oh, show everyone what you're capable of. Because even him and Sykes had it out because it was like, him was like, for the first time in three years, you're actually showing me results and now you want to shut it all down. She's like, are you not seeing the body count that's literally start, starting to rack up? But for him, it's like anything that goes forward, those bodies are on you and Jonas for starting this whole thing. The fact of the matter is also, don't get all judgy on me. You literally experimented over, on all these people for the past three years. Don't act like your, your morality, you all high and mighty with your morality in that regard, so... Which, kind of speaking all that, it's interesting because in this episode, Shauna and we learned that Shauna and um, Sykes actually were kind of tight. Like they watched the fly together, ate pizza, they talked to each other. We also learned I didn't, I never had seen that pop up before. Like what is like it, what is that? Like because the whole like semicolon thing is supposed to represent like someone who tried to kill themselves, and I was like, huh. That's so interesting. Like, i never seen that before. Like, is that something that happened? Like, I don't know whether that's kind of supposed to be like a survivor's group type of thing of like the marking supposed to be like, I tried to, but I'm still here. Is that why it's like a semicolon it's supposed to be like, I made the attempt, but it didn't work out and I'm still here. Luckily, it didn't work out and I'm still here. Or is that something like some med like, you know, some mental facility or hospital uses that to mark someone to let people know like this person is at risk for that or something? I don't know. It might be more of like a support group thing is kind of what I'm thinking, but and that's kind of another thing that they bonded over. And that's why, you know, Sykes is where she is right now because it's like, I was given a second chance, so I wanna do good with that second chance. And the whole her and um Shauna you know, it's like, I'm going to be by your side the entire way. But Sean, uh, Sykes was like, eventually, you know, when Shauna comes to visit her, it's like, the fact is, I thought you weren't in there anymore. She's like, stop lying. The fact of the matter is, you're not a good person. You just manipulated me. It, you, tr you try to act like you're a good person, when in actuality, you're not. Look at all these people you brought here to experiment on. And it's kind of interesting because now we kind of get a little more perspective on why she went after Clark the way she did. Because Clark is close to Sykes. And the point is, for her, it's like, I want to take everything from you everything that's important to you and then when it's all taken i want to eat you and find out what you taste like so it's like that's that's interesting because i guess for her like out of anybody she feels like you know sykes stabbed her in the back the hardest because it's like not only did you trick me into coming here without really explaining everything to me even when the time came it's like oh what happened to winston because she saw winston's name carved in her room and it's like Oh, like, Sykes never really gave an outright answer, but it's like, oh, I'm by your side through it all. And it's like, on top of you not telling me the truth about everything, you also said that you're going to be by my side. But the moment you got a chance, you locked me up in the cage like some animal, so... Now we see why, like, Shauna's kind of done what she's done with the whole Clark situation. Like, he's a means to an end. Like, she's going to take him. It's kind of the whole thing, too. But it's also kind of meant to be, like, a middle finger to Sykes as well in that regard. But I... You know, so it's definitely going to be interesting to see that kind of continue forward. You know, there's also the Elizabeth situation. She's been informed about everything. And I like that she hasn't completely uh, shifted over either because she's like, oh, you think Jonas will find a cure? And Tim's like, what? Cure? No, we are the cure, the cure for humanity. And it's like, you've got like this, what was it? I forgot the exact wording he used, but it was kind of like, you have this um, stamp passport for like what's to come. Not everyone's so lucky. Essentially, like, the chosen few get to join the family while the rest end up being food. It's kind of like what Winston was kind of getting at of, like, oh, you know, top of the food chain, what it's like to be king, essentially, you know. So it's such a fascinating um, aspect to it all, so. But it was kind of interesting, too, that Jonas was kind of like, yeah, we can't let this go through, like, you know, this was all to save Elizabeth, sure, but the fact of the matter is it spiraled out and turned into so much worse. He's like, I should have killed Tim 
back when I had the chance. And it's like, you you didn't know what it would have spawned into, but it's like, it doesn't matter. We're here now, and so much death has happened. So it's interesting. I'm curious to see what Tim does going forward because it's like, literally, Jonas was there about to burn all of you if it wasn't for and it's like obviously he's probably going to heal from it maybe it'll take a little while it looked like he was already healing from it a little bit in the um episode now it's kind of interesting because that's an aspect i'm sure she has it but that's something we haven't seen yet um i'm sure tv wise that'd probably be something we might see later on probably not to the most extreme extent like the whole like her Amy's like healing ability and stuff like that also what's interesting is even after all this time she still hasn't gone all vampire like she doesn't I'm I'm curious to see will she ever manifest that face. I'm sure, but it might take a very long time. Or maybe not at all. Like I'm sure she's gonna hunger for her blood, but it's like it's yet to come up. So maybe if she ever drinks blood, it's gonna be her fully embracing transformation. You know, once again it's like it depends on what her whole deal ends up being. Maybe at a certain point she can um Never really have to worry about that. I'm, I'm curious to see is Brad going to end up becoming her food type of situation. I'm like, oh, you know, like he said, he's going to protect her no matter what. So it's like rather than you have to worry about hurting other people, here, drink my blood, which that's going to become a complicated situation eventually. Got me. The problem is not only are you a vampire, you're also like a preteen. So, you know, hormones and everything. Once again, the whole puberty conversation. So it's like a temperamental teenage teenager who's a vampire, like I said, heightened emotions and everything, like, life is a, not just a teenager, borderline a teenager, well, let's also not forget she's going to be pretty much stuck in this state for the rest of her life, potential with the whole, like, immortality aspect of it, too, that has to be considered, so, like I said, I'm curious to see what Tim's going to do, because even, it kind of borderline plays out in that way that, like, you know, Jonas was like, she's never going to love you, you know that, right, and for him, it's like, because Tim is like, oh, yeah, you know, it happened, uh, after all that work we did, I saved you. He didn't. He didn't say we, because it's like, no, nah, screw Jonas. It's like I saved you. But it's like he tries to reach over to touch her, but she she pulls away. It's like she doesn't feel that way about you. And maybe he's thinking the moment she shifts over, because I mean that. But that that point, that's the crazy thing about it. It's like, is she really going to be in love with you, or is it more so like the vampirism and the sway you have over her that's going to have, you know, her potentially feeling a certain way towards you? Because right now she's afraid of you. I mean, sad thing is she's even afraid of herself. Because even uh, Jonas kind of points it out of like she went from being in the state that she was and it's cured. She's cured. She's great. She feels powerful. But then it's like, oh man, on top of all of that, now it's a situation of I have this whole situation happening to me and I'm, you know, going to become this monster. It's interesting too because I'm sitting here thinking about it. it had to have been a couple hours uh, in retrospect. I guess because, it, you know, it kind of makes sense too because I guess it's like. Whereas, like, a, if you're bit by a vampire, like, it's a more direct tap to your, you know, the virus spreads more rapidly through direct contact. Whereas they probably, like, you know, just introduce it into your system and it takes a while for it to fully... Well, because I also, let's not forget that the person that was bitten at the house was kind of an older lady. But the other people seem, I mean, I'd say older lady, but I mean, you, you don't really know, like, their whole situation. Because the whole thing was like, oh, if you're younger, you're able to fight it off more. But all those people transformed fairly quickly after uh, Winston bit them. So it kind of seems like direct bites kind of speed up the transformation, whereas, like, blood will take a, at least, at the very least, 48 hours type of situation. And, you know, like I said, it depends on the person, so... Very fascinating um, episode. I'm very interested to see where all of this takes us going forward into the next episode um, with everything going on. I'm curious to see what Gilder's going to be up to, uh, where Lacey's at, because I'm sure she's not too far behind. But what's going to happen with um, Lila and um, Brad? Like, I don't know if Gilder's going to have them killed or something like that. I feel like it's more so like he's just going to detain them somewhere long enough until he can you know, grab Amy and just bounce, potentially. So, we'll just have to wait and see. And now, moving on to the season finale of Manifest. A great episode. A lot of stuff went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Uh, you have Griffin, obviously, getting released from prison, and then he's kind of being treated like a celebrity, which is kind of interesting, because now this causes more problems, because they even talk about it. It's like, oh, the believers, they're going to believe in, a, in us even more, and being like, oh, we're miracles, and then the other people are going to be like, oh, the fact is, they're going to look at this as like, oh, this is even more reason why they're freaks, and you shouldn't trust them, blah, 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 blah. So, 
that's going to be an interesting turn of events. The fact of the matter is, what happened to Griffin shocked me because I was like, oh, because it's like, oh man, he's going to try and expose them and everything. But it's like, dude, the government's going to come after us. But he doesn't care because for him, all he cares about is like, oh, I got a superpower. The fact of the matter is, I want people to try and come after me. Oh, the cops are going to keep an eye on me. Let him do that. Just. He feels invincible and it's like, well, that's what happens when a D-bag like him is given this power and stuff like that. So it's like, dude, he's going to express it to the world. It's like, what's going to happen? The conversation does come up because even Zombie's like, the fact of the matter is these callings aren't all that we think they're cracked up to be. You know, after her experience and everything like that. But for her, it's like, maybe we need to take care of Griffin in a permanent sense. But others are like, whoa, 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 we can't do that. That's not what we do. Like, they... You know, callings are about kind of handling things a better way, essentially, and stuff like that. So no one else really want to think like that. Turns out Zeke did, but we'll kind of get to that in a second. But it's like, I was like, how's this going to play out? Then all of a sudden, he starts throwing up water. I'm like, oh, what? I was like, is this is this a calling getting back at him? Like, oh, you want to break the rules? The fact that it matters, we're going to make you suffer. I'm like, oh, he's drowning. He's dying the way he died. So is that what it does? Because, like, once again, I'm going on this huge tangent, so follow me along. It, if you've seen the Vampire Diaries, there's that moment, there was the barrier that the tra when the, the travelers, I think that was who they were, uh, basically put that barrier, they basically made it so that once you cross the Mystic Fallen line, the magic would disappear. Vampirism, everything supernatural in the Vampire Diaries universe works based on magic. So the moment you crossed over, you went back to dying the way you died before you became a supernatural. So like, take for like, what was it like? I think Stefan had gotten shot, so the moment he crossed the borderline, he started bleeding from a bullet shot one again. That's what I was thinking was happening here. I was like, oh, they're kind of get you retribution for the way you died. So I was like, oh, so that's what it is. So it all came down to that. But it turns out that is not the case at all, ladies and gentlemen. What is it? Turns out they have an expiration date. You die, like this return only lasts a certain amount of time. He died 82 hours, you know, give or take. Obviously, you have to add in like... Um, but basically how long he was underwater, you know, how long it was before his return, it's how much time you have before you go back to dying again. And I guess that was the whole thing. It was like Griffin was meant to be like a, a, an example because I guess that's why they, I mean, I guess you can make the argument why the universe, the, the callings or whatever, picked a shitty person because it's like, eh, he was a shitty dude, so who cares? Which is kind of like, whoa, like there is something to this. And in that sense of like, there is maybe some higher power or some being controlling this. The fact is that it went to the trouble of choosing someone shitty just to get rid of him in that regard. So it's like, wow, that's crazy to think about. And now it puts that on um, Ben and the others. Everyone from 8 to 8, they have a limit. They have a... Uh, uh, expiration date. That also means Zeke does too, but their expiration date ends up being June 2nd, 2024. And Crazy Olive ended up figuring it out before Ben could even do the calculations because it's like, whoa. Because it's like, the Peacock, Goddess Juno, uh, Gemini 2, and then 2024 with the year of the Wooden Dragon. And it's like, dude. And that means it's even less time for Zeke. Zeke's got a year. I mean, to be told is, I mean, Griffin's like the latest example, but might, maybe there's someone else out there that's returned to, or at the very least, there might be people in the future who are returned as well. But now this all ties into like Cal's vision. He ends up drawing tombstones for him, Ben, uh, Cal, and Michaela, and it's like, oh, wait, what? And Zeke's the only one who knows, which that in itself, Cal not willing to tell everyone, and that kind of being a burden that only Zeke knows, because he cares about Michaela, he wants to, you know... That's why he went to get the gun because it's like I'm a I'm a do this like none of them can do this I'll do this if it means protecting Michaela and her family in that regard, uh, you know. So it's like you know because actions have consequences and because Kyle just couldn't bring himself to tell his family the truth, it led to that situation. It's like the, he went to the one person he probably should have went to, or you know maybe that's the way it's meant to play out. It's hard to say in this grand scheme of things. It's like is this the way things were always meant to play out? You know, it's just kind of like I said, events kind of compounding upon each other. So if it you know, so, I mean, when it's all said and done, they end up finding out, but it's, it kind of breaks your heart, because all of us, like, we can't tell Cal, he literally already lived his life thinking he was going to die, but he got better, and it's like, it's not fair, but, you know, Cal's like, no, I know, I just didn't know how to tell you guys, and it's like, that's a heavy, that's heavy to know that, and you've literally got, like, five more years with your, like, and, you know, in the case of, you know, 
all of it's like your brother, your dad, and your aunt. You got five more years, and then they're gone. You know, Grace just got them back, too. And it's like, my family was reunited. Like, we went through some trouble, but we're here. We're in a good place, and bam, this hits. And then the moment she starts throwing up, I'm like, oh, oh, she's pregnant. And then immediately hit my brain. Even before Ben found out, I was like, ooh, that might be Danny's baby. Which I figure we weren't done with Danny yet. Now that's going to be a complicated can of worms because Ben's all excited. Oh, you're pregnant. That's everything. Oh, how far along are you? Six weeks? Oh, yeah, that's around the time the plane came back or before. And she's like, I don't know. And it's like, that's complicated, dude. Because he was like, oh, yeah, the, you know, because I thought she was going to say it then because Ben was kind of like, oh, you know, the four of us go to Jamaica. Just kind of like, you know, go back to that beach. Kind of like, I like that because it's like compared to like the beginning of the episode where we saw them in their vacation for Jamaica before all this went down. It's like, you know, it was kind of like, oh, we got to forget about our problems, you know, get to enjoy the sun and just the beach and just I want to stay in this moment forever, stay on this beach forever. You know, I'm kind of, you know, because even, you know, Ben was like, you know, Kyle kind of forgot about his sickness and even maybe once or twice I ended up forgetting too, you know, so. And just to compare and contrast of, you know, just like where they were then and just kind of where they are now and just like the difficulties being a very different set of circumstances and difficulties all on our own. It's kind of interesting because it's all circulates, you know, with so many other things like Sanvi's dealing with her situation because it's like she kind of doesn't want to, I guess for her it's like everyone already thinks they're kind of be like, I guess she doesn't want people to look at her like she's fragile because the fact of the matter is like the whole plane situation and now this on top of everything, you don't want kind of people to kind of you know, kind of tiptoe around you. You just want to be okay. I guess, you know, as a doctor and just kind of a scientist as well, like, I think that part of her brain is just kind of like, no, 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 like, you know, I'm good, I'm okay, not really, really willing to see what's there, you know, so... Which is interesting because, you know, we end up finding out later on, it's like, oh, lo and behold, who's the therapist she gets hooked up with? It's the freaking... Uh, major, and now it's going to be like, okay, so Sanvi had talked about the fact that she's not going to talk about anything, you know, about all of this with her therapist, but the fact of the matter is, her therapist, being a major, is probably going to start angling a lot of the questions, if anything, most likely towards Cal and everything, so it's going to turn into a complicated thing, like Sanvi's going to secretly be helping her without even realizing it, it's like, and the fact is that she has, like, medical, like, uh, medical credentials like that too i mean to be fair i mean there's different facets of the army i mean and the military and stuff like that so she could have been like a medic or you know a do trained doctor or something in the military and then just you know ended up becoming like a major or something in the you know military and stuff like that maybe the doctor that was hooking sanvi up with that secretly was kept there to keep an eye on sanvi because they probably had their eyes on every passenger uh from 8 to 8, so that's probably what happens in that regard, I'm assuming, or maybe, like, he's an unknowing participant in all of this, maybe he has no idea, or maybe he was paid to keep an eye on or something like that, I mean, there's any number of possibilities that potentially could be, so... What's also interesting, too, is that there is another doctor that found the markers in Griffin and recognizes, like, oh, yeah, it's also in that kid, Cal, too. And now it's, like, it's it's taken care of for now because Zombie's trying to slow that down. But eventually it's going to come out, like, other people are going to start noticing that and piecing things together. And then Cal's going to become more, I mean, he's already kind of in the spotlight, but he's going to be in the spotlight even more because of all of this. So it turns into an even more complicated situation in that regard. So that's definitely going to be interesting to see where they potentially handle that like interesting enough that's also you know coinciding with the major because i'm sure like that's just going to solidify the major coming after him even more and stuff like that so because she is in the process of just gathering more information before she acts you know taking cow you know i guess because she's even said a reference of like oh i've been doing this for a long time it's like wait has there been others before 828 that have just been covered up but maybe cow's just a special or just kind of the situation of handling things of a similar nature but not this exact situation not like it's some crazy supernatural higher power thing but more so something of a more earthly situation but just kind of in a similar regard you know what i'm trying to say like i'm curious like what she was referencing when she said that but on top of all this you had the whole jared situation and zeke once like i said like everything's kind of compound upon each other because you even have jared kind of being jealous but like yo is there anything between you and zeke and michaela's like no he's just a friend i'm trying to help him uh, because Zeke ended up going to his mom, his mom turned him away because he tried to explain everything to his mom, but his mom didn't want to listen because it's like, oh, you're a junkie. Just basically how Jared looks at him, like, you know my past, and once you know my past, you aren't willing to kind of give me a second chance. And Jared wasn't. Even Michaela kind of had her moments of kind of, you can tell she was kind of 
I don't really know. It seems like Zeke's hiding something now, you know, so it turns into that whole uh, deal. But, like, Zeke ended up buying a gun, but Jared looked at it as, like, oh, you're buying drugs. And it's like, oh, I know. Like, it's kind of interesting. Kinda, he just kind of got all jealous and possessive. But to be fair, it's like the woman you've been in love with for so long just came back into your life. And it's like, hey, we can finally be together. We're destined to be together. But then Zeke had to kind of, Zeke is who he is, I guess, just. Because you would definitely tell he was pretend. Like, I had pointed it out before where it seemed like, hey, are they kind of doing a whole him and Michaela thing? Maybe that's why they were meant to be in, um, why, like, they were so connected in that regard. Because maybe it isn't Jared and Michaela that are destiny. Maybe it's Zeke and Michaela. Or maybe Michaela's simply there to help Zeke pick his life back up and stuff like that. It's hard to say. Like, it's a very messed up, messy situation, especially considering, you know, where it already all started with the whole Lordis situation. That love triangle now is potentially, you know, another love triangle, but now including another third party rather than Lordis. It's Zeke and. And then what that, you know, what that whole Lord of situation also means for Michaela's friendship, you know, that's her best, that's one of her best friends and everything, so it's like, jeez. Uh, but to be fair, it's just so interesting to see that, like, Jarrett kind of losing his mind like that. Like I said, it's understandable, but it's just kind of, like, crazy to think. I mean, to be fair, it's him, I mean, that's both of their missions. They both want to protect Michaela in their own way. But, um, getting back to what I was saying earlier, it's just the fact that Zeke kind of running his mouth being like, because it's like, oh, maybe you're meant to be together? Maybe not. And like I said, also, I was also talking about what's going about bring up the whole fact is like, the stuff I thought before, I was like, oh, it seemed like they were doing something there. But also, like, in this episode when he hugged her and kind of had his hand on her back, like, I was like, that seemed a little damn intimate. And even seemed like Michaela might have been picking up on that. Maybe in the back of her mind, she was thinking like, no, 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 it's not like that between us. Like, even she maybe had to kind of catch herself to think like that. I have no idea. Um, that's kind of where my mind is on everything, so... But getting back into it and everything, I do, like I said, I am curious about what the real point between the whole Zeke and Michaela situation is. Like, was it just simply meant to be like, oh, help him get his life back? You know, because even Michaela admitted, like, oh, yeah, like, you know... Um, Everything he said was true. How I know is because I was in a similar situation. And it's like, oh, yeah, I'm one of those 828 people. And it's like, okay. So, like, for me, I'm like, I interpret that as kind of, because Michaela's like, I came back and my mom was going. And it's like, okay. So, it's like, Michaela doesn't want things between Zeke and his mom to be bad. Because, like, you know, Michaela lost a chance to make things up, you know. You know, her mom is kind of like her best friend, too, and it's, like, very important to her, a very important part of her life, and it's, like, now that she's gone, it's, you know, I mean, it was so sudden, too, and it's, like, I guess she, it's, like, you had the chance to make up with your mom and be close again, like, it might not be the easiest thing, but you still need to try, and she felt bad because she's, like, I turned him away, I said all those nasty things, but it's kind of, like, when he comes around again, make sure that you open the door, you know, this time let him in. Now, that's interesting considering, like, the struggle between Jared and Zeke. He pulls out the gun. It's like, this is what I bought, not the drugs. It's also interesting, too, because, like, the whole drink that he bought earlier in the episode, even though he didn't drink from it, drink from it or drink it all, it ended up, you know, adding to Jared's suspicions. And that ended up with everything being what it is. And it's just, like, struggling over the gun. I'm like, oh, this is not going to end well. And then it hard cuts at the end to the gun going off, and it's like, lo and behold, who got shot? It literally could have gone any of three ways. I feel like more so than anything, Michaela, but now that I'm here sitting there thinking about the whole conversation Michaela had about Zeke, it's like, he probably got shot. Whoever got shot in the situation doesn't necessarily mean that they would die, but I feel like it might be Jarrett just to kind of make that, you know, stab a little deeper for Michaela. You know, it's like Zeke's the one potentially responsible for it, even though Jarrett kind of did his own thing, like Zeke will be held more responsible before and even if Jared isn't dead he's gonna be you know wounded that might later on lead to him dying or at the very least maybe it's going to cause Michaela to look at Jared a little different at the very least look at Zeke potentially a little different but I'm thinking in the end what's gonna happen is it's gonna be Michaela uh, but getting back to the point because his mom was she was like oh when he comes back you know uh, open the door is what Michaela was saying to uh, Zeke's mom. It's like, that could be very foreshadowing of like, oh, he's not going to make it through this. Uh, you know, the whole Jared thing of like, oh, we're meant to be together. Might be foreshadowing he won't make it through it. But Michaela, I doubt she died. But I think if she did get hit, the fact of the matter is it turned into a blaming competition between the two of them and it'd be an ugly issue. But the fact of the matter is they'd both be responsible for it. And, you know, I'm, you know, it might be what 
ends up stopping them is her being there to catch the bullet rather than one of them potentially where it could have been fatal or in Michaela's case hey maybe she'll get lucky so my mind isn't aiming more so towards Michaela but I can like easily see it go any of the other two ways if anything I feel more so Zeke well no more no I'm sitting here no no more Jared because like if it was I feel like Zeke's already got like a an expiration date you know the whole year situation so I don't I don't see them doing that to necessarily wipe him out now I mean you can make that probably be the argument he is safe until that year mark where it's like yeah until then you can make the argument it's like oh he's invincible but I guess the argument could be like oh you could die at any point in time but you are definitely going to die a year from now essentially so that's where my thought is. I mean, I'd love to see where all of this would take us in a season two, like, as the mystery expands, like, to see any other instances of, like, you know, people returning and stuff like that, you know, learning about this grander power, understanding who the major is and how she even got mixed up in this whole stuff in the first place, how she even found out about this stuff. From what I'm looking at online, it seems like it hasn't really been confirmed by NBC whether or not this show is coming back for a second season. I hope it is because I'd love to see what they would do with the second season and like, you know, find out, you know, steps towards figuring out this grand mystery and just where everything, you know, lies. And the fact that no matter is this whole expiration date situation, you know, maybe there is more to it. Maybe there isn't. The fact is that Kyle drew it kind of makes you go, yeah, it's in stone. And the fact that the matter is, you know, is there a way of stopping it or is it just kind of an end all be all? We came back to do the good we're meant to do and then we're just kind of returning to the ether when it's all said and done who knows we'll see it'd be kind of interesting too because we saw how griffin died but how would they die would they die in like some lightning striker where their bodies just fade away to like some light or something like that who knows we would just have to wait and see you know like i said hopefully this is coming back for a second season but really that's all i'm going to talk about in this episode to the next time we meet be happy be safe love light to the fullest and enjoy it good day and good bye